Hi, I'm Carol Jansen from Seabird Electronics, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Seabird 911 Plus CTD Hardware Setup and Configuration Basics. The Seabird 911 Plus Profiling CTD System is Seabird's flagship CTD. The 9 Plus is the underwater part of the system. It houses the data acquisition, telemetry, and power supply circuitry. The 9 Plus receives its power from the 11 Plus deck box shown here on the right and it operates over more than 10 kilometers of sea cable. It can also operate several types of water samplers. The 9 Plus comes standard with a pressure sensor, two temperature and two conductivity channels, and eight voltage channels for auxiliary sensors. This is a schematic diagram of how the 9 Plus CTD system works in a real-time profiling configuration. The 9 Plus, again, doesn't have memory or power, so requires power supplied to it by the 11 deck box unit. Real-time profiling means that you are viewing and storing your data on your computer at almost the same time that the measurement is being made at the end of the winch cable. The data acquisition component measures the sensor's outputs and telemeters the data up the C cable to the deck box. The deck unit then receives the data and transmits that data to your computer for display and storage. In the middle of all this is the winch and a slip ring, which I show a picture of here. These provide the mechanical means of getting the instrument down into the ocean and the electrical data stream back up to the deck unit. Here are the end caps for the 9 plus CTD. On the left is the top end cap. This top end cap has bulkhead connectors for all the auxiliary sensors. That would be sensors like dissolved oxygen and fluorometry. Auxiliary sensors are also those that are not temperature, conductivity, and pressure. Those are reserved for the bottom end cap connectors. The top end cap has connectors for also the C cable, the GO15 water sampling device, and it has a center connector that allows you to attach an SB17 Plus, which is a memory power module for the 9, a remote instrument, or an SB32 water sampler. The bottom end cap has connectors for two pairs of temperature and conductivity sensors, so you can run dual sensors on the 9, pump power, and a bottom contact switch. The bottom contact switch is just a mechanical device or a weight that hangs below the instrument package. When that weight contacts the bottom ocean, a data bit is sent up the cable and an alarm is sounded off in the 11 deck box to let you know that you're approaching the bottom. You want to make sure that you do not plug the C cable into the pump or the bottom contact connector. The C cable has two pins. This could cause serious damage to the CTD. In 2007, Seabird changed the bottom contact connector to a female connector to reduce this possible error. Older units can also be retrofitted. The core sensors that come with the 911 are conductivity, temperature, and pressure. The conductivity and temperature sensors shown here in this diagram are the SB3 and SB4, and they are mounted externally on the 911. The pressure sensor is internally mounted on the CTD. So all the sensors except pressure used on the 9 Plus are what we call modular, meaning they can be removed and replaced with other units as needed. The pressure sensor is typically housed internally to protect it from shock and rapid temperature changes. We do measure the temperature at the pressure sensor itself and mathematically compensate for any temperature effect on the output. All 9 Plus CTDs use a pair of scientific digiquartz bored on tube, shown here on the right. How this works is that pressure generates a force across a quartz resonator as the tube tries to unwind when the pressure is applied. The measured change in the frequency of the quartz oscillator is what we measure to output an applied pressure. That pressure sensor is connected to the external environment through the bottom end cap using a capillary tube that we fill with mineral oil. You can also get a dissolved oxygen sensor from Seabird Electronics that's used for profiling applications. 
we recommend the SB43 electrochemical sensor, which was designed specifically for fast and fast sampling profiling applications like those used with a 9 plus CTD. It not only has a fast response time of 1 to 5 seconds, but it also has very low electrochemical drift compared to older models of this sensor. And it's not sensitive to hydrogen sulfide poisoning. If you are working in a configuration where you cannot do real-time data acquisition, you can attach an SB17 Plus uh, memory and power module to power your 9 Plus CTD. The 17 Plus has 16 megabytes of memory, and it also has a capability for you to program it to, water, uh, to make water sampling. It receives pressure information from the 9 Plus to close bottles, and then you just tell it where you want those bottles to close. For more information on the 17 Plus module, we refer you to our website. The 9 Plus CTD samples temperature, conductivity, and pressure all at the same time. And it also has a sampling capability of 24 Hertz. We always recommend that you sample at the maximum sampling rate to take advantage of the fast response time sensors and the high resolution data that you can achieve with an SB9 Plus CTD. Memory is not really an issue anymore for storing data, and so this is a recommendation that we make for all our instruments. You can always post process your data better later, too, to reduce the quality or the quantity of data that you have to keep on your computer. Seabird CTDs are pumped. We do this in large part to reduce dynamic errors, which are errors that occur when you are on a moving sampling platform. It also ensures that we're making measurements on the same water parcel at all the sensors along the plumbing path. So this diagram just shows you how the water travels through our plumbing on a CTD and how it passes each sensor at various times. We control the pump with a constant flow Therefore, we know exactly what time these water parcels are passing by each sensor, allowing us to make more accurate calculations of, of uh, derived parameters like salinity and dissolved oxygen. It also allows us to control sensor response times for sensors like conductivity and oxygen, which have a flow rate dependency for response time. Because we plumb and pump our CTDs, it's very important that you plumb for successful CTD measurements. The first thing to keep in mind is the pump is magnetically coupled with the impeller. It's not self-priming, which means it doesn't run well with there, when there's air inside the pump. In fact, trapped air will cause non-steady flow and can cause the pump to seize. So you want to make sure that the CTD plumbing is arranged so that the air can escape from the plumbing before the CTD is lowered throughout the water column. On the 9 Plus CTD, we connect the temperature and conductivity sensors with a TC duct. These pictures here show how the TC duct should be when it's connected properly. And, uh, and if you see noise in your data or see problems with salinity spiking, it could be because your TC duct is not attached properly. You want to make sure that your plumbing is allowing air to exit. And this example is for a 9 plus deployed in a vertical orientation. So as you put the CTD in the water, water will be forced up through this tube and through the pump side of the plumbing and will be admitted out through this Y-fitting detail near the surface. In there is a air release valve that allows the air bubbles to purge out of the top of the CTD. It takes about 40 to 60 seconds for the air to purge out of this system, depending on how many sensors you have plumbed along this line. If you're doing a horizontal deployment of your CTD, perhaps mounted onto the bottom of a water sampling carousel, you want to make sure that the intake of the sensor system, plumbing system, is the first sensor in line with the flow path. Then you want to remove the Y-fitting valve because that will trap air and just make sure that the, uh, the air and the water have a continual uphill path to discharge air from the system. Your pump exhaust should be the highest point on the CTD in this example. And this is just a picture showing how the horizontal CTD mounting is attached to a carousel, water sampling carousel. You just want to make sure that you make a clear path for a fresh sample of water to enter your temperature intake area. 
Thank you for watching our video, and for more information, we welcome you to visit our website and to go to our training materials, which you can download online. Thank you.